Hey guys, what's up? So this video is going to be of my frog tank, and I just recently did a video of my frog tank and getting my frog, but I'm going to be redoing his tank. Already. <laughs> yeah. So the original setup didn't really end up working out very well, unfortunately. He's really small. I don't know if you can see him in there. He's sitting on the stick right there. I got him almost two weeks ago, and I got him with someone really close to me. I've had him in this tank, and of course when he gets older I'm going to upgrade his tank, obviously. If you get any animal, you have to make sure that you up the upgrade their enclosure when they get bigger, and that's what I'm going to be doing with him. He's actually really small. As you can see, he's chilling there. He's pretty small, so I have a little bit of time, but they can get pretty big, and they can get obese also, which I'm going to make sure that he obviously doesn't get obese and overweight. Let's cross your fingers and hope that doesn't happen. So the tank that I did up for him originally, I wanted him to stay in there for a lot longer than he did, but it didn't really work out. I know I should have done this a lot sooner, but I didn't. But I really like the outcome and what it looks like now. I think he really, really likes it and it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty awesome. I really wanted to do a waterfall, but he's still really small, and my best friend actually has a lot of experience with frogs and these kind of frogs in specific, so she told me it probably wouldn't be the best idea to put a waterfall in it yet and small places that he could possibly hide or get stuck in because it's not very safe for a small frog. They can't really get themselves out of the most tightest, stickiest situations sometimes, she informed me, so I didn't want to take any chances. So when he gets older, he'll get a waterfall but for now, he's getting bubbles, as you can see. And he will eventually get live plants. I have some live plants in there now, and I'll show you throughout the video. And they're actually doing really, really good. The light that I have on here, I got from Amazon a bit ago. And it's a fish tank light for growing fish tank plants. But it works really, really well for these kind of plants. And you will not believe where I got the moss from. You will not believe it. It's moss from my local park. I got it like over a month ago, all different kinds, and I quarantined it and treated it to make sure that nothing was on it. And that's what I use. That's what she's been using for years now, and it's perfect for her reptiles and amphibians, the ones that she uses moss for. She loves it. She swears by it. And I have a trick that I'm going to be putting out soon using um, local beach sand that I've used, and I sterilize it and treated it. And I use that in my planted tanks, and I've tested the water, all the fish are okay, and it works amazing. You can do things for free with things that are all around you if you know what you're looking for and you know how to treat it afterwards and sterilize it to make sure it's safe for wherever you're putting it. That is the only problem, and you have to know what you're looking for. You gotta make sure you get the proper stuff because. That is a biggie. <laughs> I also have a video, if you haven't seen it, you should check that out too, of me gathering and treating wood and driftwood from different places around the beach that I got the sand from, and I use that in all my tanks I have for a few years now, and it works awesome. So you just have to really know what you're doing and what you're looking for to be able to do these things for free and cheap, and it saves you a lot of money. And it looks a lot more natural because it is. It's not man-made. It's world made. The tank that I want to get him once he gets bigger is an exoterra tank. If you're not sure what they are, this is what they look like. And they're really awesome tanks. You can put water or a different kind of substrate at the bottom and then it gives your animal a lot of room to climb at the top. You can get them all different sizes and different like shapes and stuff. It has like a door that you can open and I want to get one that has a good amount of room in the bottom but that's tall for him to climb. Mine particularly really likes to be in water and that's why I put some water in his tank with a bubbler so that it would make sure the water is stays kind of fresh throughout water changes. But I really really want to have it bigger and better as he grows. You know, white tree frogs, which is the kind of frog that he is, really likes to climb. That's why tree frog is in the name. They like to be in trees, they like to climb. So eventually I want to get him that kind of tank. And depending on the frog and its needs, some like to be in water more than others. Mine particularly really likes to chill out in the water a lot of the times. And that is mainly why I put the water feature in there like it is. I didn't want just a little water bowl, but a lot of people do, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted something a little bit extra because 
I always go the extra route. So I have him still kind of chilling in there. Right now I don't have him taken out because he's still settling in and I don't want to freak him out by handling him too much and taking him out. And especially because yesterday is when I redid the tank and a bit over a week ago is when I got him. So I just kind of want to let him settle in and on top of the tank, it's really annoying me, but that is a piece of, what is it called? What is it called? Oh my God, what is it called? Tile, tile. Because the one part is like flapping up and I don't want to have him or any of his crickets gets out. And that's another thing. What do they eat? They're really, really easy to feed. And something else to remember is their water also. So they eat crickets or dubia roaches, mealworms, superworms. The two important things that you're going to want to remember to do if you have one of these is when you're feeding them to sprinkle the insect with calcium powder. There's all different kinds that you can get from the local pet store or online that'll be really, really good for them. And when you give them water, whatever water you're giving them, you're going to want to make sure there's no chlorine in it. So the water that you get from the tap usually has chlorine in it and just like your fish, it's not good for your frog. If you didn't know, it's also not good for your fish. Very bad. You're going to want to dechlorinize the water and you can use all different sorts of products. I use Cap Prime and that works really, really good for me. I use that for my frog and I also use that for all of my fish. So those are things that you're going to want to remember if you get one of these. So this is editing me and I'm not going to be on camera right now because it is hella late at night and I don't look cute so I'm using this pig to talk. Anyways, so something I forgot to say was you want to also gut load the crickets which means you're going to want to feed them really good stuff like fruits and veggies right before you feed them to gut load them and make them full of those nutrients so they will also go into your pet whatever you're feeding the crickets to, okay? Okay. So something else that you're gonna want to take in consideration if you do handle a frog of any kind is they breathe through their skin. They do a lot of breathing through their skin and they can absorb stuff through their skin really, really easily. So if you handle them, you're gonna want to either use gloves, which is the best option, or clean your hands really, really well, which can also lead to problems too. Let's say you don't get enough enough of the soap off or there's a little bit of soap still left on your nails or anything something as small as that can get on your frog skin and be really really deadly to them so I just prefer to wear gloves a lot of people don't and they say oh it doesn't matter but I just to err on the side of caution I just do <laughs> so now we're gonna get to the fun stuff the remodel of my tank I actually did this yesterday so this is gonna be all voiceover but I hope you like it here we go Okay, so right there, that dirty bowl, that's a prime example on why I'm doing this. One of the big reasons. So I would have to clean that bowl about two to three times a day because he would always be in the husk and then go clean himself off. So honestly, it kind of was a big pain in the ass to have that thing in there, but I'm glad I took it out. It was honestly the biggest pain getting all the husk out of here. Like you have no idea. So this is the filter that I was gonna use to make a little waterfall, but I ended up not using it. But that's the one I'm gonna use one day to be making the waterfall. So I ended up moving the tank from the shelf by my bed to my headboard because it saved a lot of room. And to be able to separate the husk from the pebbles, I put a bag and then I put some pebbles over the bag where the water would be and then put the husk on top. It really, really helped from getting that husk into the pebbles and into the water. I highly suggest doing that. So I put the airline tube for the bubbler right in the middle and it's working really well to make sure that the water doesn't get all stagnant. And this is it with all the husk in it and it looks really really cute I think and all the moss. And the moss is growing really well. There's a few different kinds and honestly it is growing amazing.
So the plants in here that are actually real is all the moss, like I said before, this little succulent, and this vine plant. I'm really happy that this has taken to the light so well. This used to be in the back of one of my fish tanks, and I put it in here. I'm eventually going to add a lot more live plants, but for now, this is what I have. You go in his water bowl a lot and then get full of husk afterwards, and I really needed stuff around it. And I want to get different substrate for his tank, but it's really hard to get stuff right now because the whole country is on lockdown due to the virus. I really hope everyone's staying safe during this and making sure that they're staying inside and watching over others that might not be able to protect themselves. We're all in this together and I know it really sucks. I want to go see my friends too and it's hard being cooped up inside all the time, but the more people that stay inside and help this stop spreading, the sooner we can go back to normal and not have everything shut down. Because I don't know about where you are, but where I am, pretty much everything is shut down. And even if you go out and drive around, they're giving you fines. There's a lot of things that you can't do anymore because of this, and it sucks. It really sucks, especially if you have a lot of animals. It's kind of scary because if you need something and you don't have it, it's like a panic. So you gotta make sure you have it and stocked up on it. And that's what I'm currently starting to do. But some things are very hard to get. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe, as everyone says, and help me grow this channel. You can also check out more of the frog and me and all of my other animals on my Instagram. Here it is, and you should totally do that. I will see you on my next video. Bye.